In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of the Kings. Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord lives, the God of Israel whom I serve, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except at my order. The word of the Lord came to him, Go away from here, go eastwards, and hide yourself in the Wadi Kirith which lies east of Jordan. You can drink from the stream, and I have ordered the ravens to bring you food there. He did as the Lord had said. He went and stayed in the Wadi Kirith which lies east of Jordan. The ravens brought him bread in the morning and meat in the evening, and he quenched his thirst at the stream. The Word of the Lord Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall come my help? My help shall come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. May he never allow you to stumble. Let him sleep not, your God. No, he sleeps not nor slumbers, Israel's God. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord is your God and your shade. At your right side he stands. By day the sun shall not smite you, nor the moon in the night. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord will guard you from evil. He will guard your soul. The Lord will guard your going and coming, both now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Alleluia, Alleluia. Through the good news, God called us to share the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn. They shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right. They shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful. They shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart. They shall see God. Happy the peacemakers. They shall be called sons of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. This is how they persecuted the prophets before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A drought is coming, as we hear in the first reading, where there will be neither dew nor rain. So what is happening in our passage from the first reading? 
Well, the king of that time was Ahab, who married Jezebel, who asked for an altar to Baal be built. And Ahab did, which meant that he trusted and relied in a foreign god. So the question is, does Ahab believe that God provides or not? So could it be that he was thinking of better plate safe and to have other securities as well? You know, we Singaporeans have this term, kiasu, which actually means afraid to lose or afraid to lose out. So it's better to play it safe and to have uh, many things as possible, just in case. But the fundamental question is, after possessing all these things, acquiring more and more, reaching out for better and better things, are we happy or not? As in, truly happy. In the Gospel, today's Gospel, our passage is from the Beatitudes. And we hear each line begin with the word happy. But what does this happiness mean? If we go to the Greek, it is the word makarios. And I think we can already figure out from the title of this passage, uh, the Beatitudes, uh, which in plain English means blessedness. How blessed or how happy are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So this happiness, it's a deep and unshakable happiness, a blessedness. Because we possess not perishable or earthly things, but we possess what will last and what will ultimately fulfill, ultimately satisfy God himself and the love of God. But we have to trust and believe that God alone is enough that despite our struggles and isolation and mixed up feelings and desires, that there is hope that however little faith we have, so long as we plant this seed of faith in the poor soil of our souls, God will provide its growth. So long as we hunger and thirst for what is right, we shall be satisfied. And the best thing to hunger and thirst for, to desire, is God himself. And so, dear brothers and sisters, let us thirst for God alone and we shall be satisfied. And with faith and hope and trust that God provides, we now pray in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.